Good evening. It's so good to have you with us this evening. We've come to worship Jesus Christ. He's with us in the midst of our of our circumstances, our suffering. We can just lean from here tonight as we lift him up and magnify him. I pray that he's going to meet you right where you are in your living room, in your kitchen, that he's going to minister to you tonight. You believe it?
fantastic day today. I'm here by the fire. I hope it'll keep you a little bit warmer tonight. And uh, it's great to see you this evening, or at least in spirit. Uh, I am looking forward to sharing with you for just a few minutes tonight on the subject. Eh, it's got two titles, Troubled Waters or Poolside with Jesus. You can take your pick of those two. Trouble needs an answer. Uh, we know that life is full of troubles. It's problematic. Um, and uh, sometimes trouble can be used in a lot of different terms. Um, my childhood uh, uh, gang of friends uh, was not like the gang that's of today, but um, a lot of times when people saw us coming by on our bicycles, they said, there goes trouble, and, uh, and we did get in our, our fair amounts. In the Bible, we see that uh, the word trouble uh, appears uh, uh, about 210 times, and the word troubled about 68 times. And anything that's um, denoted as this many times in the word, I think we should take a look at, especially in this particular time of trouble that we're living in. So um, is your miracle in trouble during this pandemic? I wanna talk a little bit about that tonight. The healing at the pool in John 1, uh, or John 5, 1 through 19 is my text uh, tonight. And I want to share that with you. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jer Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which is in, in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie down. 
the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 long years. But when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else gets, gets down, goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, well, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and he walked. We are people that do not run toward trouble and to trouble, but from trouble. Trouble is a word that brings fear to all of us. When you were a kid, you might remember when your parents would say uh, to you, you're in big trouble. I knew what that meant. I'm sure most of you did as well. When, trouble, troubles many, when troubles many people have a tendency to always think of the worst. We think of the worst outcome, the worst situation, the worst experience, the worst results. You see, trouble doesn't carry a connotation of goodness or good things about to happen to most of us. Trouble isn't something that most typically find the good in. We can't find or see the positive most of the time in trouble. And as a matter of fact, some hate trouble so much, they will sometimes do crazy things to get out of trouble. People will lie to get out of trouble. People will relocate to get out of trouble. People will hide to get out of trouble. People will even try to buy their way out of trouble sometimes. Second of all tonight, observations for what I call the deep end of the pool. People will do anything and everything, as I said, to get out of trouble. But prevention is important to keep trouble from coming our way. Only a crazy man would even go looking for trouble. But how should you and I respond to trouble that you and I cannot control? How do you deal with trouble when it's something that is not a situation that you sowed into, it just showed up. The third thing, possibilities in the deep water. Is it quite possible, I'd like to ask you tonight, that just maybe in the middle of trouble is a treasure? Second, is it quite possible that in the middle of a problem could be a promise? Is it quite possible that in the middle of a disaster could actually be a dream. Troubled waters, I call them angel waves. Sometimes trouble can't be avoided. How we respond in those times of trouble determines what happens after visited by that same trouble. In this passage of scripture we're looking at tonight, we see the occurrence. Get into the water. There lying in Jerusalem was a pool in the Hebrew called Bethesda, healing waters. Now, I enjoy the water. I enjoy swimming. I enjoy being out at the beach. But more than anything, I enjoy watching my grandchildren play in the water. And I think they're kind of a healing water. Now, right now, as we're talking, it's about 89 degrees at Pam and my home in Florida. And the kids are probably have just gotten out of the pool after did they their chores today. And they love to go to the pool. And I love to see them giggle and laugh and jump into the pool and in the water. And I, I, I just think that there are healing waters in the flow of Christ and the fountain that never runs dry in our lives. During a certain season, an angel would stir up those waters and the first to get into the water, of course, would be made whole. The Bible here describes all kinds of sicknesses and diseased people would hang out on this pool deck. Jesus comes and finds one man who is diseased and is not able to get to the water first because of his condition. He was paralyzed. He couldn't move, hadn't moved for 38 years. But I want you to know tonight that uh, if you need healing in your body, you don't have to go to the pool anymore because Jesus on the cross and his, the beatings that were there, the stripes, the Bible says, were put on his back for us. And I know, want you to know that Jesus, with great mercy and compassion and power, simply speaks the healing into his life without having the man get in the water. And he can speak the same peace to your life and the same healing by you just receiving that healing from God. In this passage here, we, the, the word troubled comes from a Greek word, terasso, which means to agitate 
or stir up, and surely trouble stirs and agitates things up. What a perfect definition of trouble. Trouble has a way of coming into every life. You can't plan for it, arrange it, decide how or when it will get there. Sometimes trouble comes from a sickness or a situation, from another person possibly, or even from a pandemic like we're in right now. Sometimes our thoughts are troubled. Sometimes our thoughts are really troubled. It seems that almost any and every part of our lives can be troubled. I've even heard Christians say, use the phrase, I'm troubled in my spirit, and I know what that feels like. Seeing how that trouble is something that we are all too familiar, is it quite possible that God himself uses trouble to show us his wonders? Let's go to the last three laps in the pool of life. Takeaways. I would like for you to understand tonight. First of all, Paul, no one is exempt from knowing trouble. If you haven't had trouble or you're not in the middle of a trouble, someday you will have trouble. Because, as I said earlier, and I say often, life is problematic. We don't see those unusual things coming our way. We don't know where they're coming from or how rapidly they're coming. It could be so many different things that create trouble in your life. And it can even bring on anxiety and depression. Even the wrong words spoken to you sometime or with the wrong tone of voice can be difficult. And in these times, we can have trouble in even our homes together and, and, and couples as, as was mentioned just a few, uh, few days ago uh, on, this, on this same network, that, that we have to understand that the tone of familiarity gets sometimes quite difficult when we are sequestered or kept captive like I am by my wife to make sure that I don't get any pneumonia again or anything like that. And uh, it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes for even she and I to been, been together uh, fortunately, we have some space in our place this year, and we have a beautiful fire that I like to sit beside and get the fire of God boiling in my soul when I'm especially studying and praying uh, in the mornings. But it's, it's so interesting to know that everybody at some time or another will go through some kind of trouble. And again, the way you deal with it sees how you come out on the other side of that. Second of all, trouble is a person's life is not always a sign of someone doing something wrong. I, I, I've heard too often people use the cliche, well, I wonder what he did to get into that situation. And sometimes we do bring on trouble ourselves. I know I have more than one time in my life, some bad trouble. I've done it uh, 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 several times. I remember an instance that I told uh, probably in church or uh, with us chatting around sometime if we were in that environment about when I got in real big trouble when I was a, 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 that boy hanging out with my friends that we called our gang. But at that time, uh, we used to have a box machine that had uh, sodas in it, so, uh, a pop in it. And uh, they would have sliding racks and they had something called True Aid Orange that I really liked and True Aid Great. They were very skinny bottles, but they were in a rack. And you actually could, could put a dime in there. But I had learned how to very carefully take those out. And one day we were at the, uh, uh, after we were riding our bikes, we were all hot and sweaty, and there was about six or eight of us. And um, I said, you know, guys, uh, if anybody's got a dime, I think I can get us all a drink. And I was able to go into that machine, and I was able to very carefully take a bottle of that True Aid orange out and hold down the lever so it didn't quite click. And I went on to number two, then number three, then number four, and so on and so forth. And uh, nobody saw me, and I was uh, uh, happy that I had, I had blessed my friends with these uh, stolen drinks that I did. Uh, and, and got those drinks for everyone. So I was riding my bicycle back to my home neighborhood, and finally it was getting late in the uh, early evening, late afternoon, early evening, and I drove down my street on my bike, and I saw a police car in front of my house. And I was so terrified. I was so, uh, so knowing that they had caught me and I was going to jail or even prison for a long, long time. So I ran, uh, took my bike and went to my hiding place, was in a grove of trees near my home. Uh, we had a little camp there. Uh, we had uh, kind of built up with, uh, with branches and stuff like that. And I went out there and I prayed. 
Oh God, if you'll get me out of this and don't let me go to prison, I will live for you forever. I made so many vows and so many promises, some that I've broken, by the way, since then, but so many vows. And I cried and I prayed to God and I went home and the police car was gone and I snuck in the back door and my dad was sitting in the living room and he said to me, Tony, come here a minute. I want to talk to you. And I went in the room and he was sitting there in his, his chair and I, I, I knew I was in trouble and I started confessing. Dad, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to do it. I'll never do it again. If you won't let him take me to jail or to prison, I'll be so, I'll, I'll do everything you want me to do. I'll be obedient for the rest of my life. And dad said, I don't know what you're talking about. A police officer was here today, but he was looking for another boy on another street, an older teenager. Now you tell me about what you did. I confessed and my dad, he said, well, son, I'm so disappointed that uh, you sinned and didn't do the right thing. And um, I, 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 just, I just was crying and I was praying. And uh, as an 11 or 12 year old boy, I was just overwhelmed and, and I thought for sure I was gonna get forgiveness out of that. And then he said, let's go to your room. We went to the room and those that are my age or maybe a little bit younger than me, but maybe not too much younger than me, uh, can understand what happened next. Dad prayed and prayed for me. Dear God, don't let him be a, a, a criminal. Don't let him be that. God, forgive him for his sins, Lord. And then he uh, adhered uh, the belt to, to me. And uh, I could never understand if he was going to have mercy and pray for me. Why didn't he let me go? But sometimes the penalties come, don't they? Even, even in, in all kinds of life. So trouble in a person's life is not always a sign of someone doing something wrong, but sometimes it really is. As a matter of fact, trouble comes to people who are doing things right. The Apostle Paul is a great example of that. Uh, he was always in trouble. He was in trouble with the law. He was in trouble with people. He was in trouble with the church. Even his friends he got in trouble with uh, on, on several occasions. The Bible tells us in Matthew 5 and 45, the Father sends rain on the just and the unjust. We all get the rainstorms, whether we're, we're living for God or not living for God, and there's reasons for that rain to come in our life. Even when you aren't looking for trouble, trouble can find you. If you're just walking around minding your own business, you still can be affected by trouble, and it can find you somewhere. The second to the last thing that I want to share tonight is trouble can do three things. Trouble can uh, actually grow you. Trouble can grow you. Uh, and trouble can actually make you a better person. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is found in Psalms 4 and 1. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me, me than I, when I was distressed. I want you to know that God will enlarge you. And I'm not talking about eating too much or going to the refrigerator too much through this pandemic, as I have done. But I, uh, I believe that God can enlarge your spirit through times of trouble. What is your first response to trouble when it comes? Do you complain? Do you blame God? Do you blame someone else? Do you cry, woe is me? I remember that old funny song, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark, depression, excessive, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Woe is me. God doesn't want us to be like that, does he? If you stop and take an honest look at the times of growth in your life, you will find that many times it has been after you have come out of trouble. Thirdly, trouble can show you. Note, the last thing I want you to see here tonight, God is good at rescuing his children when they are in trouble. All praise be to the Lord. Aren't you glad? It is interesting that we all want God to come on the scenes of our life, but we look for him in some of the strangest ways and some of the strangest places. Some want a miracle from God handed to us on a silver platter. We want God to call us ahead and say, your miracle is on the way on such and such a date at such and such a time. Dear friends, sometimes your answer is found in the midst of the trouble. God is not trying to play hide and seek with you, but I think he's wanting to see if we are willing to trust him all the way, even in trouble. Conclusion tonight, David, 
King David discovered God's greatness over his, over his life when he was in trouble. Joseph found God's plan to exalt him while he was in trouble. Ruth and Naomi found God's idea of provision when they were in trouble. And Daniel discovered the protection of God when he was in trouble. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego discovered God's power to preserve and to transform a wicked king when these boys were in trouble. And Paul and Silas in the jail found God's ability to bring freedom from bondage when they were in trouble. That makes me want to just praise God and sing his songs because I know that those chains will be broken. A trouble chains will be broken when we praise him. My friend, the very trouble that you might be trying to avoid and deny could be the very place that God is hiding his miracle just for you. Turn with me to see this verse of Scripture if you have your Bibles out. If not, you know it by heart. Psalms 23 and 5. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Sometimes that bring me trouble. You need to remind yourself, just because I'm in a mess doesn't mean I'm missing his glory. Missing or miss and mess are two different words. And you can't miss his glory in the center of of the storm. Pastor Rhonda used part of these words last Wednesday night and didn't she do a great job and a fantastic job delivering the message last Wednesday night. She said, she said uh, later on, I'm going to read the first part of this verse that I want to read tonight and it says basically closing what she did. I think it's a great thing. It was a tremendous uh, opportunity that she took and just, 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 just uh, talked about it so, so well. The Bible says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. We are troubled on every side. Yet she said last week, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Trouble does not have to and cannot, cannot destroy you if you keep your hand in the hand of Jesus. He wants to sit on the side of the pool when you're even in the deep water. And he'll rescue you and he'll pull you out. And before you even get to that deep place in the water of, of, of trouble, he can show you and speak to your heart through the Holy Spirit. May the God of heaven and earth, may the creator of all, may Jesus the salvation and the savior of all, and the Holy Spirit, which is our teacher and our guide, be with you every moment of every day of the rest of your life is my prayer. God bless you. Good night. Pam and I love you so very much. Can't wait to worship with you in corporate worship as soon as we can. God bless. Good night.